Sita Ram, Jai Shri Krishna. Welcome to each and every one of you. Today is Friday. It's the 4th of March, 2022. And today we will start where we left off the last time, but introducing some really interesting concepts of our complete lifestyle. Because uh, when you're living with mantras, it means you must have a healthy body and a healthy mind. And the soul is always healthy because the soul is neither born nor dead. It is unchangeable. It's perpetual consciousness and energy. And so the emphasis is to bring out a different way of living our life in accordance with our Satya Sanatan Dharma uh, or this way of life uh, that caters for all and can fit every single entity, whatever your way of thinking or your persuasion, because words have commonality. The effect of a word is the same on almost every single individual. Um, if the word is kind, we feel love and affection. And if the word is unkind, it can be very painful. Um, so this brings in the concept of mantra being what we call violent words, or himsa, or um, nonviolent words, ahimsa. Um, the whole idea of our life is that we must have healthy organs. And this is where living a, what we call a serene life, a good life, a dharmic life um, that is accompanied by dharmic pra practice, practices can ensure that you live your fully allotted lifespan. Presently, all of us or many of you or many of us have got one ailment or another. And that has almost in many cases, although not in all cases, be as a result of our own disposition to words, our own disposition to food, our own disposition to um, exercise, our own disposition to meditation or lack of meditation, our own attitude to what we call chanting mantras and using kind words as being the way forward. And this is why this, this series throws a completely different light on how we Hindus or how we Sanatan Dharmis or how we descendants of Bharat Mata and Bharat Varsha has this unique opportunity of changing ourselves by ourselves. So the emphasis is that we have to move to what we call this universal culture and stop identifying ourselves as Hindus. We have to identify ourselves as universal Atma, universal soul, where the commonality of how we live a healthy life and how we live a long and productive life follows directly from the path of our dharma. So this is a picture of what your organs should be like. And as we go towards the end of today's satsang, you know, there will be many bits of mantras that will enable you to use certain words to bring you to what we call a painless life or a pain-free life with a full body, all the organs of the body um, functioning well. Uh, you know, one of the very first mantras um, we were taught in our own Gurukul in Gayan when we were growing up, is this mantra th um, that goes along the lines that, um, you know, may you see for a hundred years, may you hear for a hundred years, May you live in prosperity for a hundred years. May all the organs and all the faculties of your body be perfectly operational until 
your last breath you know is ko se tak chakshur deva hi tam puraschat muksha shukra muchara pashiyema sharada shatam let my eyes and my internal vision and my external vision i pray it today um that i offer my gratitude that my visions both physical and spiritual which means your intuition be in perfect order for 100 years so the mantra goes but before we go back to let us say we let us cast let us cast that our mind back to the beginning of time um there is a famous saying which goes like this in the beginning there was a word and the word was god um our shastras um tells us that before there was even light the whole universe was pervaded by sound it was sound even before space there was sound and it is this sound energy that created this creation of this world and this is the same today that based on the sound you make your world shall be created if you are you know um, kind and very sweet spoken your life will be very different but if you are very rough in your speech you are very argumentative you are very conniving you are very criticizing then you will find that your life will be very very difficult and as the story goes there were two brothers their father had a very prosperous farm with many vineyards and olive trees and bee hives and whatever so every day the two brothers had to go to market to sell their produce so at the end of the day when the brothers come back the one will go to his father and he said to his father look you know my younger brother um he sells vinegar but by 10:30 middle morning he's back home and even at the closure of mar- market my honey has not been sold out and the father said to him your younger brother sells vinegar but his mouth is honey and you sell honey but your mouth is very sharp it's like vinegar and even at the lower level it teaches us some of the secrets of success you know speak well and the world welcomes you speak bad and nobody looks at you um so your mantra is your word so we must not think that the mantra is only tvameva mata chapita tvameva tvameva bandhu jasaka tvameva tvameva vidya dravinam tvameva tvameva sarvam mama deva deva now we identify a mantra as something like that but how about let us say someone um picks up the phone and you got a call and guys hi jack how are you today why did you call today you know i'm having such a rough day so jack has said his mantra what he's setting out his stalls that his day is not going to be good Now let us say now I phone George and I said George how are you today oh my it's such a wonderful it's very pleasant day i think today is going to be great so what you do by the power of his words and by the vibration he is sending out he is creating now he is his mantra he has offered his prayers to the god that hears the word and will make his day great because he has set his mind on using the right words and understanding the power of words to make his day wonderful and awesome and remember we haven't done a puja as yet so the, your day starts before you do anything by making a distinct choice about the words that you use and understanding the power of the words the reason for this is that words our mantras or creates the orientation of the mind to change the attitude and lifestyle measures we seek um so right away 
we get the idea of the power of the word. So your word changes your environment. And it is your word that tells your mind, that tells your super consciousness what your desires are. And if we use, I would say, the muscles of our super consciousness and we feed it with good vibes, with good verbs, immediately those people who were your enemies become your friend. Because it's not only the word that you would speak, but the thought behind the word is benevolence and kindness. So knowing that we are all connected by the divine, super atma, super heart, that person will then know that we are thinking benevolently of them, unless they have a heart, a heart of rock, which nothing can, can influence. So they are going to think that whatever happened, the world is against them. But we are talking about people like you and myself of having benevolent thoughts that then result in benevolent mantras. In our day-to-day -day experiences, there are numerous examples of the effects of word, as is seen in situations of violence and nonviolence. Uh, and this is very important for us, not to say in a domestic situation, in a home situation, to know how easy a very small incident can be blown out of proportion by using the wrong word or the wrong mantra. So once we are now conscious that words can create violence that leads in something abusive or sometimes physical, if we step back and only use calming word, irrespective of the situation, you know, let us say you have a favorite piece of China that you inherited from your great, great, great grandfathers come through 10 generations or whatever. And let us say, you know, your daughter accidentally drops it on the ground. You have two choices and you say, ah, it just came so far. Let us send it off with blessing. Or you make your child life so difficult and make her feel so guilty that you have created a very unhappy environment and situation in your home. You create sadness within your home and you're the cause of a soul being sad. It's not remember the broken um, piece of China that is the problem, but it is your attitude towards the laws of gravity that has created the problem. So what this means again, we must always try not to be attached or to be connected with anything material because every single thing that is material can be replaced or can be bought. And if the time did not come for it to disappear from your sight, then that would not have happened. So in focusing on mantras, there are some simple steps that we can should cultivate. And these are asanas, performed, performed one, repeating the appropriate mantras bring great energy and awareness. So we were talking now that you have to have the or try to cultivate the right posture. So if we go, I think, to chapter six of the Bhagavad Gita, um, there's a whole section, I believe, around uh, verse 30 in that area, where Bhagwan Sri Krishna instructs us how to get a good position to calm your mind. You know, simple things like sitting on an elevated level, sitting on a very soft and comfortable um, position with your back erect and with your hands in the right mudras, and you in the right posture, your asana should enable then for you to concentrate and get the benefit of your mantra. So if you sit down in, let us say, many houses have settees now. So if you sit down and you slouch into it, the back is in the wrong orientation. The nerves are all twitched. You're going to feel so uncomfortable that you will not concentrate. So just another tip is that if you want to go down this road, 
it doesn't matter that if you don't know a mantra of such, but just to sit down and calm yourself, um, you would be amazed at the difference in your life. So we were coming back again of what happens when there is an argument or there is a use of uh, what we call violent mantras or violent words. So the first thing to uh, disengage that situation is to take an asana or sit down. So the moment you say, come, let's have a discussion around the table, would you believe that the argument has finished? So all what we call um, problematic situation in our life are done standing up and the hands get wagging and this get wagging and the neck get, you know, extended and the posture goes forward and backward. So on a, on a human level, on a meeting level, whenever there is argument, whether there is a dispute that poisons the air, this is the operative word, it poisons the air, we take what we call an asan. We take a sit, uh, we sit down, we take a few breaths, and by the time you have done that, you do not have a problem in your life. So the second aspect of mantras is what we call, once you have taken your seat, you do some pranayam. For those of you who attend yoga classes, you're always being taught the various breathing exercise. But let us not treat them as something mechanical as from today. But you are using now these breathing exercise to calm your mind, to calm yourself because there is something you need to use the calmness for. Yeah. And what why do you need what do you need to have a calm mind for? Because unless you have a calm mind, your mantra or your choice of words in relationship will not be the ones that you wish. And you will end up saying the word, how could I have said such a thing? This is so much not like me. So what you do, we have to always prepare ourselves, you know, to be the special person. It calls for a lot of preparation to live a strong and a noble life. So the last aspect of preparing for mantra is to understand of this um, concept of pratihara, or a very nice concept. And this is the only new word which I would, which I'm just introducing to you. Everyone would have heard of prana. All of you know a few asanas, but the next stage up from all of this is when you choose word. Um, that is what we call internalizes or internalization of the senses. So which means you are moving now, you are no longer this person that can be affected by what someone says about you or the noise on the road, or let us say you are driving on the road and someone's, you know, what you call comes in front of you. You have the choice of word, two words you can use. Look how that person, and you would use some swear words, look how that person has cut in front of me. Or the second way of looking at it, it's nice to have given way to that person. So the two power words here, one is what we call low energy is cut. And the high energy word is give. So to give always bring immensely more happiness than to cut something that belongs to somebody else. So the choice of words or your choice of your mantra, let us give, will bring you so much peace and happiness because from give extends gratitude. And we know the, the secret of all forms of happiness is to, is to show gratitude to all of God's creation. So pratihara or pratyahara, the word means inter internalization of the senses necessary to bring a deeper awareness to our deeper mind on, a, on heart. The journey of discovery of mantras will in time introduce you a mantra that you were born to chant. And this is, you know, I conclude this opening that 
all of us, and you will see from this section down, what is the meaning of this? Each and every one of you were born to chant a mantra. Whether you do it in this lifetime or another lifetime, eventually you will have to find a word or a tune or a chant that is in synchrony with your subconsciousness that let us say, you know, um, I, we can chant a, a simple word like this one, um, which we take us down here. Like you said, the next topic which we're going to do is this one. Om Bhadram Karnebi. So let us say, you know, many of you would say, look, you know, I think I was born to chant this beautiful mantra. And we will go into the sources, but let us hear how this mantra sound. And you, you may like it or you might be neutral about it. One moment, let me see. Yeah. And the mantra goes like this. Om Bhadram Karne Bishunayama Deva Bhadram Karne Bishunayama Deva Bhadram Karne Bishunayama Deva Badram karne bi shunyama deva. So what you do with mantras, you make chants out of them. You make music out of them. That is very convenient and compatible to your soul. So today we will do this mantra. Everyone who does puja, this is about the first mantra. You will hear the pandit chant. And when the pandit is chanting, this mantra, you know, you will finish it so quick. I, I will go through it and show you how, it's, how quick it's done, that you do not have a time to take in the power and to understand what this mantra can give you. So the chanting would be done like this. Om Bhadaram Karnevi Shunayama Deva Bhadaram Pashe Makshabi Yajataha Syarangai Tushtuvagam Shachunumi Vyashema Deva Hitam Yada Yahu Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Now, when it's done like that, the Yajman or the person who is doing the puja, I mean, genuinely will know that the Pandit means him well, but there is no impact at that stage unless we understand that exactly what is being said to us. And this is why this is such a powerful, powerful mantra. And, we, you know, you can get, I will send this to you by, on the chat tomorrow to everyone who is on the list. Um, and I will send it on the email as well as WhatsApp list. So you would have this copy tomorrow. Um, so the first thing, the first thing, let us, bow down to the Supreme Lord and ask his blessings and his guidance that we may get the full meaning of this mantra. So let us offer praise to Ganesh Bhagwan. Om Shri Ganeshaya Namaha Om Shri Ganeshaya Namaha Om Shri Ganesh Aye Namaha. So as we start now, this first mantra, and like all mantras, start with Om. And but we do not, in many occasions, focus on the Om. In reality, the Om is the most important word of the whole mantra because it is the Om that gives protection of the mantra. And it is the Om that ensures that your mind is open to receive the blessings of this mantra. So let us go back to this mantra. Om, if you can, we'll just do the first line. And I will do it once, and then we can do it two or three times very slowly, so we get the pronunciation right. Om. Bhadaram Karne Bhi Shunayama Deva. I kindly recite it with me. Om Bhadaram Karne Bhi Shunayama Deva. Again. 
ओम भद्रम करने भी शुनयाम देवा सो जस्ट रिमेम्बर द वर्ड्स भद्रम करने भी शुनयाम देवा like in hindi the object the object of the sentence is normally the last words so if we translate om bhadram karnebi shunyama so we have the word devas so which means the gods or the bhagwan we have this word karna karna means to hear karne karne bihi means what is being heard are worthy of being hearing so the mantra is saying let us go to the individual meaning that bhadram means auspicious karne bhi which means with the air let us hear or may we hear or may us hear what is worthy of worship O oh, devas, those who worship, let me hear what is auspicious. And this is such a fundamental concept if you want to live a noble life. Uh, it's a teaching that you, as you go on in life, you know, uh, in colloquial language, you say, "Look, I don't want to hear this nonsense, or I do not want to have a discussion in this." Nothing is wrong in saying that it means you've reached a stage. where you're very vocal in saying look you know i've reached this stage where certain things will not benefit me from hearing or from listening um, to and we will come into the meaning as to why it is so harmful to listen to what we call low energy words so by chanting om you're already in the intuitional plane you know what is auspicious when you are in the intuitional plane so the plea is to identify and tune into what is auspicious by using the ears at a higher level it is the inner hearing or or clear audience accordingly you either tune into what is auspicious or hear only what is auspicious and so this is the whole idea now to train yourself because this leads on to something else because you would see what you're hearing um uh, you'll want to see so the next mantra ask the devas to bless you bhadram pashyem let me highlight this bhadram pashyem akshabhir yaja traha the word yaja or yadya means that you know religious work that which is good all forms of um, sacrifices that let me only see that which is benevolent and that which would give me what we call good karma so karne bhi we said let's move on to the next line bhadram pashyem aksh bhir yajatra so we know everyone should remember the word bhadram meaning auspicious um pash means to see pashyema means may we see o lord with what with aksh our eyes yajatra yajya yajya means that one who is a recipient of our worship Our, our 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 sacrifice so o oh lord o oh yajatraha may we see with our eyes only what is auspicious and you know in this world with so much television soap too much television news so much violence in the world it may be difficult for you to live a hermit life but once you take the decision to live this life within your own home that you can see you know good books you can see the beauty of nature outside you can observe the the butterflies flying you can observe spring coming and you can make a comment on the graciousness or the greatness of this creative lord who is responsible 
for bringing the seasons to us, for causing the trees to sleep and causing them to awake with beautiful blossoms, beautiful leaves. So this is where you're using your questioning eyes to make decisions and to come to conclusion as to how you are going to use your eyes. And then the last two lines is wonderful. So the mantra or the rishis then says to us, with our organ, let all of our organs be steady and our body praying. So in, in, in our language, in Sanskrit language, there's a word like tan, look this word here, tan. Tan means the body, and normally tan is always uh, related to man. So man is in man, but the word is mind. So we are body and mind. So the mantra is saying, may we live a life of satisfaction with strong organs and a healthy body. Beautiful word, you know, that we are setting out our stores and all of us, wants a pain-free life. We want a life of satisfaction with strong organs and a healthy body. Why? Vyashema devahitam yadha yuhu. May we attain or may we have the lifespan allotted by the devas. And many of us or many individuals would overlook the power the power of this last line, Vyashema, Vyashema, means may we attain, may we have, may we say, the lifespan allotted by the devas. It's a very, very, what we call fundamental concept. Once we get into what this really means, lifespan allotted by the devas. And once we start to get into this concept that there is someone looking after you, there is someone, your guardian devas, or in English language, we would say your guardian angel, that was, is the God of not your body, but is the God of your Atma. So you, each and every one of you on the screen tonight, has definitely have a protector. And this is when we feel weak, this is where we do not remember or acknowledge that the God who caused your incarnation or that caused you to be born with this human form prior to which you were uh, have what we call a resplendent form as a soul, that deva that caused you to enter your body is your protector for all the days of your life. And this is so comforting. It is really comforting to know that Vyashema Deva Hitam Yadayahu. May we praise the Lord during the lifespan. So, in order for your devas to be energized, you know what we call. So your deva means that which is resplendent, that which is shining. We have to feed it with fuel. So for you to be protected by your deva and to feel the strength of your deva, you have to praise that Lord. You have to do prayers. You have to offer adorations to the creator that has caused you to be, to be given this life. So may we praise the Lord during the lifespan given to us by the gods. Come back to the beginning. You know, all of us have been given this birth by God. Nobody can give you this except one that has the power to do that. And there's a very nice uh, mantra, beautiful mantra that you do when you do uh, Ishwar Upasana. Om. Ya Atmada Balada Yashya Vishwa Upasate Prashisham Yashya Deva 
यश्य छाया अमृतम यश मृत्यु कश्मय देवाया हविषा विदेम या आत्मा बलदा we pray to that one who have given us strength the one who is strong enough to create the movements of the atma from body to body from janam to janam we pray to that lord we bow down with faith love and devotion so we are shema devahitam yadayahu so if you can just recite this line with me we are shema deva hitam yadayahu vyashema deva hitam yadayahu such powerful may we attain the life span allotted by the devas and it's a wonderful prayer is you know if you sit in a nice posture your hands over your chest and you meditate you know on that god maybe we do not know how to call him or how to relate him and we say oh god may you bless me that i live my allotted life span in good health and happiness lord may i never have any mental problems may i not have any any diseases no alzheimers may my diabetes come to an end no blood pressure no problem no problems of the skin of the head of the heart of the chest because then you are empowering yourself with an unbelievable power that can move a mountain forget moving an ailment from within your body so vyashema devahitam yadayahu vyashema devahitam yadayahu so vyashema may we attain ashema may we attain from whom do we attain from the presiding deity and that is why some of you may like um uh, the formless god ishwar some of you may like the murti of bhagwan shri krishna or bhagwan shri ram or pavan putra hanuman it doesn't matter to anyone who you adopt as your presiding deva you know the one who will give you a long comfortable life of happiness but to get that vyashema devahitam yadayahu may we praise that lord during the life span assign the word hitam devahitam devahitam it is the lord hitam who has assigned to you your four scores and 10 I believe that 90 years now four scores is 20 times four is 80 plus 10. So what are you saying most people have been blessed by the Lord to live a good life in this Kali Yuga up to the age of 90 years. Now the, the real difficulty here is I don't know whether they're talking about a Georgian calendar or what calendar they are talking about. But let us assume that we are talking about a calendar of 13 lunar months. because when this mantra was written there was no georgian calendar but there was a calendar or a cycle for spring um to summer to autumn to winter that was 13 lunar months so it amongst about the same thing that we are all supposed to be blessed with this lifestyle so whatever one is going through now take some deep breath and re- and at least recite this mantra you know if you can take your phone and take a picture of just vyashema devahitam yadayahu vyashema devahitam yadayahu o god o supreme lord may we attain the life span allotted by the devas o supreme lord may we attain the life span allotted by the devas may we praise the lord during the life span may we praise the lord during the life span given to us by the devas given to us by the devas so the emphasis of this mantra is gratitude and gratefulness that we are praising the lord or our deva the one that is your personal protector there is the universal protector but god did not 
send you without what we call a maintenance engineer, did not send you with, without your personal doctor, did not send you without your personal psycho psychologist and your personal yoga teacher. That person is your deva. He sent you fully protected. But what happened on the journey of life? Our ego comes and we feel very lonely. There is no one to help me today. There is no one to support me. There is no one to accompany you because you're, you close your eyes and you close your ears. You did not go in accordance with the blessings of the mantra, the very first two line of the mantra, Om Bhadram Karnebi Shunyama Deva. Om Bhadram Karnebi Shunyama Deva. O oh Lord, again, may we be blessed to hear um, that which is auspicious. Uh, may we see with our eyes what is auspicious. And with all of our organs and body, praying and seeing the auspicious, may we attain the lifespan allotted by the devas. But let us go to what we says by chanting the Om, you're already on a good path. And then once we go through this mantra with the understanding that today, why am I going to speak well? And why I'm going to be protective of my friendship and my relationship? Because I want only what we call high energy words um, to have access to the inside of my body. Because remember, um, the ears is not only an organ of hearing, but it's an entry point to your heart. It's an entry point to your soul. So this is the power of the of the of the ear. And the same thing the, as the eyes. The eyes is not an object of seeing, but the eye is what we call a camera that sees what's on the outside and brings it to the inside. Now, if the camera sensors are divine and powerful, whatever happens, you will see it as a blessing. But let us say, if you're weak, then, and you have misused your eyes, then whatever you have seen will bring torment to your soul. So the whole idea is to come back again. This beautiful mantra, you know, Vyashe ma deva hitam yadayahu. Vyashema deva hitam yadayo, to think that you can genuinely, genuinely pray to that deva, Vyashema, deva, deva hitam, the one who gives, deva hitam, yadaya who, you know, that which is auspicious and enable you to attain your allotted lifespan. Why? Why must you be given the blessing? of living four scores and 10 or five scores because you have already passed the test of the first two line in that you are now so noble with the om om the bhadram karnevi you are protected by om that you're only able to take in those sound frequencies that makes your atma a joy to be in this body. And then to see whatever you see, and I'm not talking about um, the physical sight, I'm talking physical sight, yes. But also, we are talking about the sight that even when there is darkness around you, that sight sees. Um, you know, let us say, in this world, and from a factual point of view, you, you can go into a dark room, your eyes full, fully open, but you can't see anything. Why can't you see anything? Just step back and think. Your eyes are there. It's working perfectly well, but we can't see anything because there is no light. The moment there is light, it is the light that makes you see and not your eyes. So what we want, we always want enlightenment to come into your vision. 
then amazing, even if you are blind, you will see because of the enlightenment that is within you. So let us go through this mantra devotees. Om Bhadram Karne Vishunayama Deva Bhadram Pashye Makshabir Yajatraha Se Airangai Tushtu Vagum Shashta Nobihi Vyashema Deva Hitam Yadayahu. So tonight, just try and remember that one. There is a Deva, there is a Bhagwan, there is an angel, there is a Apsara, there is a divine being who you can call on to protect you and to help you. You know, even if you cannot find your house keys and you say, oh, Bhagwan, you know, oh, Deva, oh, my protective being, help me to find what I've been looking for. So even on a mundane level, you're being protected. It's like, you know, typical example, you're going out somewhere and there is no parking spaces, but you go to your protective deity and you're on a very lower level and he says, you know, may you reserve a parking space for me when I go 10 miles from here. And before you're going, you can actually see there is a space waiting for you. And these are just basic levels of which that Bhagwan protects you. So you're never lonely and don't ever feel lonely because then you're betraying the power of the mantra. Vyashema devahitam yadayahu. Oh Lord, may I be blessed with the lifespan that you have given me before I was conceived by my mom. Remember that day it has already been given to you by Bhagwan. He's not going to take it back unless you have neglected him or you have went, went against his will and did everything that you were not supposed to do. So let us go through again. Vyashema devahitam yadayahu. So now what we, what we would like to know, you know, it's like the devahitam. Let's go through if I can make this a bit bigger. One moment, please. Yeah, the Devahitam is the presiding Deva of each human being who facilitates incarnating in the world. And it's a wonderful because our dharma is based on reincarnation. You are the lucky one that ended up in the home of your mom and your dad. You will be amazed how many other souls were trying to get into your home. But you are the lucky one because you have the Deva on your side. The time or the lifespan that is allotted by the presiding Deva is your plan. Must be fully utilized by devotion, by worshipping, working for God for the benefit of the entire humanity, by hearing and seeing what is appropriate. May we attain or gain all of these, Vyashema, all of these utilizing the given time in the manifested world optimally. And so devotees, this is, uh, it's a lot to take in, in this, uh, it's not a lot to take in, but it's a good concept to understand just one thing, that you're here for a purpose. You are here for a time. Utilize that time specifically because God is in your side. Once you use the appropriate word to get in tune with the Lord, you speak his language. You know, it's to be friend with someone, you know, it's like when you're courting, you know, you take on the accent of your boyfriend or your girlfriend. If you and your wife are in love, you mimic whatever they do. So what we need to do, we need to mimic Bhagwan. We need to copy this Bhagwan in terms of how he would do. Let us say if you're in a situation, you question yourself, how would Bhagwan, my guardian angel, want me to react? He would always want you to react, react calmly and peacefully in a way that doesn't destroy your body, your mind, or you know, gives you blood pressure. Maybe utilize the vehicle given by these devas properly. And it's a good concept when you know, uh, for those of us who have cars, if you you know treat it wrongly, you drive it irrationally, 
you know, um, if you put kerosene instead of petrol, it's like if you put rum in your body instead of clean water, then you will destroy this vehicle given to you by the devas. Maybe utilize the allotted time fully. Pray, praying to God with all the limbs and body healthy as well as stable, coupled with a still mind. Also, may we see and hear or visualize only that which is righteous by being connected to the intuitive plans and to the intuitive plane and working in the lower worlds. And this is, we can go on on this one, but I think that's enough. So let us recite this mantra before we go to our concluding mantra. Om Bhadram Karanebi Shunayama Deva. Om Bhadram Karanebi Shunayama Deva. Om Bhadram Karanebi Shunayama Deva. Next line. Bhadram Pashyem Akshavir Yajatraha. Bhadram Pashyem Akshavir Yajatraha. Stay Rangai Tushtu Vagum Tashta Nobihi. Stay Rangai Tushtu Vam Shashta Nobihi. Stay Rangai Tushtu Vam Shashta Nobihi. Stay Rangai Tushtu Vam Shashta Nobihi. Stay Rangai. Tushtuvam Shashtano Bihi. On the last most important line. Vyashema Devahitam Yadayahu. Vyashema Devahitam Yadayahu. And if you can read this with me, that will be very nice. One moment. May we offer our lifespan allotted by the Devas for the service of the God. O Supreme Divinity. May we hear auspicious words with our ears while engaged in yajyas. May we see auspicious things with our eyes while praising the gods with steady limbs. And may we enjoy a life that is beneficial to the gods. May Indra and of ancient fame be auspicious to us. And may they supremely reach all knowing Pusha, the God of the earth, be propitious to us. So let us now, these are just some things, you know, to take you on your life's journey, um, to live this long life, be, you know, just some ideas of how we do it. This is not to tell you what to eat and what not to eat, but it's just pictorial of some of the things that will, you know, help you to live um, this nice journey. You know, what you eat, you will become. Um, and so this is a beautiful, you know, I, I'm quite sure many of you would have had your tomatoes already. It's good for the blood. You would have your walnuts. Maybe at Christmas time is good for the brains. You would have uh, this is a very nice picture of the carrot because when it is magnified, it is of the same shape and form and frequency as the human eye. And then if we go tomorrow, make sure everybody have some kidney beans or some red beans because it's good for the kidneys. And finally, what they said, the one that is really good for our um, bones and bone structure, make sure we don't suffer osteoporosis in, in old age, is rhubarb. So eat well and have a happy life and do pray a lot. We have five minutes more. So we have finished... Um, what we call the adoration and an understanding that we want to get a nice life ahead of her as given by the mantra. Um, and how do we get to the stages come when we need help, guidance and energy and protection? Where do we get this help on the way to see the good things in life, hear the good things in life and to live this long life? So the help comes from Bhagwan Indra, Bhagwan Brihaspati, and the other devas. And we only have less than five minutes, so we'll just recite this mantra. And next week, we will continue with this beautiful mantra to add that, look, okay, you want to live up to this age, 
you do not want pains you do not want headache you do not want anger but you want your day tomorrow to be brighter than the sun to be calmer than a summer breeze you know so you want your life to be that how do you get that you get that by learning and understanding how you draw the power of the devas so let us do this mantra let us just chant it is it's um it has a nice rhythm to it um and then we will go into the meaning next week om is called the swasti vachana yeah swasti vachan but to speak those words that are auspicious yeah swasti na indro vrihashrava swasti na pusha vishva vedah swasti na tariksho arishtane me swasti no brihaspatir dadhatu Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So there again, this mantra and the first one are part of the same mantra. So the man, it will go like this. Um, if you go to the temple, you would have not even remember. Um, I don't. I mean that in a nice way because they are, they are just chanted without a lot of emphasis and explanation of the power. of what you are listening to so they will go like this om bhadram karne bi shunyam deva bhadram pashe maksha birya jatra syarangai tushtu vagum shashtano bi vyashe ma deva hitam yadayu and it goes into this mantra om swastena indro vrihashtava swastena पूषा विश्वेद स्वस्ति नारीक्षो अरिष्ट नेमी स्वस्ति नौ बृहस्पतिर्दू ओ शाति 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 एंड हेर वी आर आस्किंग द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड द सुप्रीम पर ब्रह्म ओम स्वस्ति ब्लेस ओ लॉर्ड हु विच लॉर्ड लॉर्ड इंद्र Vrihashrava, let because is long known and heard of in ancient times. Swastina grant us and endow us with the power of Pusha, that Lord Surya Bhagwan, who is Vishwa Veda. You know, is this two words you can remember? Is very nice. Vishwa means all, everything, everywhere. Vishwa means all encompassing, and all of us know Veda. Huh? means something to do with learning so the veda is not only the rig veda and the yajur veda the sam veda the atharva veda but veda ha means the sum total of any and everything so bhagwan who is the vishwa veda ha what do we want him to do swasti na ha we want him to bless us tarikshu we want lord vayu the one who is responsible for the circulation of air and oxygen to give us protection and to give us blessing and we want uh, brihaspati to also bless us so devotees om shanti hi shanti hi shanti boliye shri guru maharaj ki jai boliye pavan putra hanuman ki jai and devotees badram karne bi shunyam deva badram pashyem akshabirya jatra se airangaish tushtu bhagum shashtin no bihi Vyashema Devaita Yadayu. May all of you now, let us say, if you are even eighty, live up to ninety, pain free and with happiness. Whatever your status in life, you have now call on your Bhagwan, who is your guardian angel or your guardian Deva, to be your companion. You will be amazed from tonight the difference um, it makes to your life. Mm-hmm.